Hey, poker peeps, my name is Sky with Smart Poker Study. In this video, I'm going to help you learn more about various HUD statistics. I'm going to show you exactly where to go to find them, the information that you're looking for when you get there. And I'm going to help you put that information to use on the felt. Let's get to it. Alrighty, let's say you want to learn more about the CBET turn statistic. Now, what I'm about to show you can be done with any statistic, as long as Poker Tracker 4 actually has that statistic within its database. So the first step, there's six steps total, but the first step is to find information about the statistic. Now, the very first thing, there's a website right here, PokerTracker4.com, blah, 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 blah. The link for this is, is down below, right? But when you go here, you're going to come to this page right here, Statistical Reference Guide for Poker Tracker 4. Uh, and if you scroll on down, there's some basic basic stat information here but go down every stat within poker tracker 4 is listed alphabetically you will find uh, I guess the nickname for the stat I guess the full name of the stat description and a formula for every single one right here very useful information especially if you don't have poker tracker 4 maybe you're using Hold'em manager or a different kind of uh, uh, tracking software the way they track their stats is probably the same so this is a good resource for everybody uh, the second resource here is in Poker Tracker 4. Go to the Configure menu and then the Statistics tab. Let me show you what that looks like. Configure Statistics. Now, to find the stat that you want, you can go through, and this is all alphabetical. Uh, you can scroll through it if you want. Or just type in a key phrase, a keyword from it. Ah, there's CBET Flop, CBET River, and because it's alphabetical, CBET Turn right here. Uh, so once you find the statistic, the next thing you want to do is read. Now, it gives you a detailed description right up top, and then the formula is directly below. So see bet the term, percent of the time that a player bet the turn, given that he continuation bet the flop and had the chance to do so. Makes sense. Sometimes just reading this, you have to kind of wrap your mind around it. Okay, he had the chance to see bet the turn. That means he was the pre-flop raiser. Okay, he see bet the flop. Okay, on the turn... His opponent didn't donk bet before he could bet. It was his opportunity, and then now he makes another C bet. Makes sense to me, right? Sometimes these stats can be a little complicated. You have to noodle on it for a little bit. Now, the next thing, of course, is the formula. The number of times that a player made the continuation bet on the turn divided by the number of the times the player could continuation bet. So once you kind of wrap your head around that kind of stuff, take notes in your per poker journal. So let's say here's your poker journal. You got the C bet turn statistics. Actually, this is pretty nice. You can just kind of highlight it. Control C down here. Right click, uh, paste, oh, paste values or paste uh, text right here. Bam, there's the description. And then here's the formula for you to work out and uh, keep it there in your notes so you can refer to it in the future. Now, the next thing I already kind of went on it, went over, but you want to kind of noodle on it. What does this stat mean? What kind of situations are not counted and what are counted? You know, when you continuation bet, that means, like I said, you were the pre flop raiser, C bet the flop, and then now C bet again on the turn. Somebody didn't uh, interrupt you with making a raise and then you called on the flop. They didn't interrupt you by uh, donk betting into you on the turn. Uh, you weren't the pre flop caller, right? So it's, it's pretty straightforward. This, I picked a pretty easy stat to start with right here. So noodle on it. Make sure you understand it. Um, and then, of course, you know, take notes in your poker journal. Then review some opponent stats around the table. And I have a table that I opened up already. So this is my smart HUD. And you can see the CBET, this dark blue section is the CBET section. CBET flop and then CBET turn right here. Interesting, this particular player so far... C-betting zero out of three opportunities. Let's take a look at the C-bet pop-up. In position, C-bet is zero out of one opportunity. Out of position, zero out of two. Wow, it looks like this player is pretty darn turn honest. What about this one over here? Well, he C-bets the flop 69% of the time. He C-bet 60. And so you want to think about this while you're just looking at a table. Well, that means this player really likes to double barrel. They probably do a lot of double barrel bluffs right here. Um, so maybe I should give their C bets on the turn a little bit less strength. You know, they probably have some bluffs in there, flush draws, straight draws and stuff. But this player who has not bet a single or a C bet on the turn yet, they're pretty honest right there. So do that, you know, open up a table, table to noodle on it. Now what you want to do, of course, is take action and practice 10 stats over 10 days. So tonight, let's say you want to work on your CBET turn understanding. 
Well, what you're going to do oh, over the next day is one stat per day. Just choose whatever stat you want. That day, maybe as your pre-session warm-up during your study session, go through and do steps one through five. Pick a stat, do all the research, noodle on it, figure out what that stat means. And then play with purpose. So when a player makes a play related to your chosen statistic, so maybe they see bet the turn, or maybe they didn't see bet the turn, they checked instead. Make a read on their intention using the percentage zone. So if this player fails to see bet, wow, you have a pretty good opportunity to steal it uh, after they check. But if they make the see bet, wow, really good opportunity to fold with all of your weakest hands, right? Uh, devise an exploit with your read. And if you're still involved in the hand, execute on it. So let's say you folded your hand and then, uh, you know, cut off opened, you folded, big blind called. Well, watch the action. As soon as he C bets or he C bets on the turn, take a look at his stats and try to figure out what is going on. What would you do in their place? But if you're still involved in the hand, right? He opened and you called and he, or maybe he opened, you called and then he double barrels. Maybe he has some bluffs in there. So maybe your top pair with a king is actually good, even though it is a lowly deuce kicker right there. So that's what you're going to do. Now, let's say that you actually wanted to look at a different stat, a turn AF stat. And I'm pulling up this stat in particular because it's kind of a complicated stat. So let's type in here AF. Now, AF and AFQ, we're just going to focus on AF. There's flop AF. We scroll on down. Uh, turn AF, river AF, and total AF. Let's go to turn AF because we were already thinking about the turn. Well, the description right here and the formula, we can do that exact same thing within our poker journal. Oh, and then maybe do some additional notes. Noodling on this leads me to these observations or these ideas, whatever it might be. And so for turn AF, we're gonna do the same thing. Put the definition in, read it, and make sure we understand it. So turn AF is the ratio of the times a player makes an aggressive action, betting or raising, to the times they call. Okay, so it's a ratio, bet plus raise, divided by calls. All right. For example, a player with an AF of two has bet or raised twice as many times as they've called. Great. That totally makes sense. I can utilize this. If somebody has a really high AF, they're a really aggressive player. They don't make many calls, but they love making bets and raises. Once you understand it, once you noodle on it, let's open up a table like we did before. Let's look at villain four's uh, AF. So we can see down here, AF 1.7, 1.3, four on the river. Wow, when this player gets to the river, they really like to be aggressive. They don't like to do a lot of calls. Maybe this player folds on the river a lot. Maybe I'm able to bluff them. But if I get to the river and they have the betting lead, maybe I can expect a bet quite often because their AF is so high. What about this player over here? Villain two with an AF, 10 on the flop. 10 bets and raises for every call. This player loves betting, hates calling on the flop. What about that on the turn is 0.8? Whoa, that's really darn low. Less than one better raise for every call they make. So they play that turn passively. Maybe they want to get to the river. And then on the river, it's infinite. What is going to be an infinite number? How does that work? Well, it's probably because it's divided by zero. So maybe this player has never called a river bet, right? Um, uh, if calls are zero, so bets plus raises divided by calls with zero, that's an infinite number because you can't divide by zero right there. That's what that means. So by understanding AF now and looking at this, maybe we can devise some pretty good exploits against villain two. He uh, doesn't do a lot of betting and raising. So when he bets or raises, as we've already seen on the turn, uh, he, he could be pretty honest. We can easily fold against him right there. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I highly recommend over the next 10 days, choose one stat, maybe a brand new stat you've never thought of before. Just scroll through the list and find one. Or maybe in a podcast you've heard or, a, or an article you've read recently, they talk about a specific statistic and you want to learn more and learn how to use it in game to exploit your opponents. Go ahead and do this and let me know how it works for you. You can find me on Twitter at Smart Poker Study. And please, of course, subscribe down below and click that thumbs up to let me know that you like this video. I will catch you later.